Every once in a while, I do see something positive on the internet, which gives me hope that the social divide so prominently displayed on media platforms might have reached a breaking point. I've come to expect that such things will happen on rare occasions, and recent remarks after the Christchurch massacre have an example of this amongst all of the gathering storm clouds. Christchurch was horrible, and the blame game media was in full swing. YouTube has caught some flack for suppressing video uploads of the live stream from the massacre, but they were also castigated for not catching all of them. Facebook heard even more criticism for allowing the live stream to happen in the first place. The president was blamed for fostering the hate that fueled the killer, as were the NRA and, of course, those social media platforms. Like I said, a lot of storm clouds, but one was pierced by a ray of light. Donald Trump Jr. leapt to the defense of Chelsea Clinton when she was castigated on video by a group of woke individuals. Imagine that, the son of the current president defends the daughter of his opponent in the 2016 election. Two people who have little in common and whose parents have called for each other's prosecution, and yet one defends the other? It's definitely time for some roasted opinions, don't you think? By now, anyone who has spent more than a few days on social media knows the pattern of behavior of internet trolls and woke activists. Bad news breaks, the activists go to work blaming it on whomever irritates them, including the platforms. The trolls go to work provoking as many people as they possibly can, especially the platforms. The platforms announce their new plan to curtail these storms by blocking content, and the free speech advocates go nuts over censorship on the platforms yet again, especially if their thoughtful, well-researched content was deleted by the platforms when the content managers and the AI bots started curating a massive influx of content from activists, trolls, and commentators, both scrupulous and unscrupulous. There will be an inevitable wave of people swearing publicly that the platforms, the commentators, the free speech advocates, the woke activists, and the trolls have gone too far. And just as inevitably, there will be more than a few jabs taken at people who didn't have a thing to do with the original bad news. I'm not sure if those who make the accusations are doing so for exposure, or if they actually believe that random celebrities who happen to post comments with which they disagree are the cause for the bad news. But it will happen. Chelsea Clinton found herself the target of significant ire from a group of students at NYU for her tweet which criticized Representative Ilhan Omar indirectly for some anti-Semitic remarks that the freshman congresswoman made. Now, Ms. Clinton is not the only person who has been critical of Representative Omar, but she was within reach for a public, face-to-face -face confrontation when she attended a vigil for the victims of Christchurch. Backed by a chorus of snapping fingers, two BuzzFeed contributors made a point to confront her in person, recording the entire incident on video, of course, and then writing a blistering opinion piece about it. Freaking kids these days. Look. Just for those who have never learned the phrase, time and place, from their parents, is it the right time or place to stage a confrontation of this type at a memorial service, especially after a tragedy of this magnitude? Um, no. Just, no. A host of conservative voices condemned the actions of these woke activists, including the likes of The Daily Caller, Fox News, The Daily Wire, GOP Representative Dan Crenshaw, former Governor Mike Huckabee, Rush Limbaugh, and in an interesting turn of events, Donald Trump Jr. And I quote, It's sickening to see people blame Chelsea Clinton for the New Zealand attacks because she spoke out against anti-Semitism. We should all be condemning anti-Semitism and all forms of hate. Chelsea should be praised for speaking up. Anyone who doesn't understand is part of the problem. Unquote. Now it probably goes without saying that Ms. Clinton is not exactly on friendly terms with most of the organizations and individuals which I just named. It did highlight something back in August of 2017 when the same crowd of woke activists, unscrupulous commentators, and internet trolls were ripping on Baron Trump for wearing jeans and a t-shirt in public. Chelsea defended him on Twitter. 
I didn't give it a second thought at the time, really, but now I wonder. Will Chelsea Clinton, former first daughter, find common ground with the current first sons and daughters? They have common experiences. Chelsea wasn't much older than Barron when her father became president, and she caught a lot of unwarranted comments, too. Honestly, I think that I laughed about it, too, and for that, I'm a little ashamed. If you're watching this, and I honestly don't think there's a snowball's chance in Fiji that you are, I apologize, Chelsea. I still don't agree with your politics. I still don't think much of your dad's actions. I still don't like your mom much at all. But I shouldn't have laughed when they mocked you. I see the current environment on social media, and I often wonder if there's a way to reverse it. That's part of why I keep making videos. I want for people to stop ripping each other apart long enough to have rational discussions about things. I think that we can foster a better environment online, and we don't have to agree with each other to do that. We can discuss real problems like the increasing polarization of politics in America. We can talk about whether the center shifted their positions on issues or whether the parties shifted their ideological centers. We can talk about how there is no place for anti-Semitism. Maybe BuzzFeed should look at their contributors a little more closely. The two who confronted Chelsea Clinton to blame her for the massacre in Christchurch over a tweet condemning anti-Semitism from an elected official should also look a little bit more closely at their position, too. Perhaps they should think about whether it's really Islamophobic to criticize an elected official for tweeting out anti-Semitism just because that elected official happens to be a Muslim. Ilan Omar doesn't get a pass, and neither does anyone else. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. Check out my playlist and these channels I have subscribed for more great content. Like, share, and subscribe, and make sure that you ring that notification bell.